Hi everyone, welcome to our first video dev diary. Uh, we get a few questions from people asking how we plan to manage the scope for our game. So today I'm going to take you through the pipeline I'm using to create animations for Satellite Rain. Now animation is a fairly time consuming task. So games that require a lot of animations usually have a fairly large team of animators to produce them all. Uh, obviously on our limited budget that's not a luxury that we have so I've had to look into ways that I can make my workflow more efficient and to do that I've turned to motion capture but probably not in the way you've seen it done in the past now generally when people mention motion capture you think of people in funny black lycra suits covered in ping pong balls and colorful strips that's what the big blockbuster movie studios use and it produces really high quality animation data but it's also really expensive so again that's not an option we've got available to us when we were first planning our kickstarter i found some videos on youtube showing people who had taken the microsoft connect sensor for the xbox 360 connected it to their computers and used it as like an in-home motion capture studio uh, it was Pretty cool, but as you can see from some of these clips, the results you get can be a bit unpredictable. Uh, you get arms and legs jittering all over the place unpredictably. Uh, I had to play around with it myself, but unfortunately I didn't really get much better results from it. Now the solution that I've settled on is a pretty good compromise between cost, quality and simplicity. Uh, around our studio, we've got four PlayStation Eye cameras set up in a sort of semi-circle arrangement. Now using those combined with a piece of software called iPi Mocap Studio is enough to get production quality animation data. Now the reason that the cameras are in that semicircle arrangement is because really they're just regular cameras. Uh, they don't have depth sensors in them like the Kinect does, so they've got no idea about 3D space. So having them record the action from a variety of different angles, the software can take those different video streams and sort of compare them together to work out how the actor's movements work in a 3D space. So to start with, first I just need to calibrate everything. Uh, the process is pretty simple. I just take a flashlight, like this one, and I move it around the capture area. Uh, the cameras record the motion, and then the software compares the movement of the light between the different video streams. And by doing that, it's able to get a really accurate representation of how all of the cameras are positioned in 3D. And this is what you end up with. Uh, the green trail you see is the path that the light took around the room converted into 3D. Uh, and that's it, and then you're ready to record mocap. So this is a process motion capture recording. Uh, the pink lines that you see over the body are called a skeleton. Uh, when 3D characters are animated, whether it's for games or movies, what's actually being animated is this skeleton, which then the polygons of the character model are attached to. Uh, the aims to have the bones in more or less the same position as they are in a real skeleton. So, as you can see here, the software's had no problem tracking the action. Uh, the skeleton followed the movement really nice and accurately, and so when I bring this over to our 3D software, this is what I end up with. This is that same skeleton again in Maya, which is the 3D software we're using to make satellite rain. In here, I'm able to transfer the motion onto a character. At the moment, we're just using basic placeholder characters while the final characters are being designed. So this is the point where you generally need to start making adjustments manually. Uh, there's points in the motion where the hands will clip through the torso and the legs and the feet are on some strange angles, stuff like that. Uh, so you go through, you clean up the motion, and once you're happy with it, it can be exported into the game. Okay, so this is the editor for Unity's animation system, which they've named Mechana. Uh, it's how I tell Unity which animations to play and under what conditions. Uh, now down here, I can specify some parameters that I want to actually use to control the playback of the animations. Now, Michael Chris can link these parameters up with different variables within the game. So for example, this one here I've named speed, and it will change as the character changes speed. Uh, when the character stopped, it's zero. When the character is walking, it goes up to one. When the character is running, it goes up to two, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I drop the animations here onto the graph and I basically just create these transitions between them. Now when I click on one of these transitions, that's where I tell Unity what I actually want to be the trigger for the transition. Uh, so this is the transition from idle to walk. 
what that means is he'll sit here playing his idle animation but as soon as this speed value is greater than zero he'll start to walk that's a simple example uh, but you can start to set up some more complex relationships with nodes nested inside of one another allowing you to do some cooler stuff like this here now this is called a blend tree uh, it basically kind of creates an animation that's derived from multiple other animations all sort of mixed together based on one or more of these parameters. Uh, this one's a simple one-dimensional blend. Uh, so what I do is I've plugged in the normal run animation as well as these two turning runs. There's a left and a right. I've set it up so a mechanism will blend between these three animations as the direction parameter changes. So I'll click play here and you'll see the character is just running normally. But uh, as soon as I change the direction parameter, the, it gradually blends into the turns, but at the same time keeping, keeping them all synced up and looking nice and smooth. So that's just a bit of a crash course of the animation pipeline I'm using for Satellite Rain. Uh, the five of us are actually still in pre-production at the moment, so that's basically testing things, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. So even what I've just shown you could end up changing in some capacity as production rolls on, but that's the basic gist of it. Uh, so I hope this has helped give a bit of a better understanding of at least one aspect of games development, and we look forward to hopefully showing you a bit more of what's going on here at Five Lives as the production of Satellite Rain rolls on.